I want to go back to 1965. 1965 Los Angeles was a time where the black community was really east of the 110 freeway for the most part. That's right. And um, because of the covenant, covenant, covenant covenants, property, real estate covenants, you really couldn't buy west of the freeway. And so most of the people I know from that generation grew up in Watts and Compton. Some went to Jeff, some went to Jordan, some went to Washington, but that's where black Los Angeles was, mm -hmm. all along that Central Avenue corridor. Mm -hmm. And so that's where you were at that moment. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I didn't know this until last night, but you were a police dispatcher. Yes, I went to work at LAPD uh, as a radio telephone operator. That was the name, and it was a police dispatcher doing the radio calls to the police cars. And I don't know how long I'd been there when the Watts Rebellion broke out, but I happened, by coincidence, to be the operator that got the first officer needs help call. And, uh, you know, and then it was on. The hard part for me at that time was that I lived about six blocks from where it happened. So my kids were home. My mother was right across the street. My husband was home sleeping because he worked a late shift. And I could, I could hardly wait till I could be relieved from my position to go out to the public phones in the lobby to call home and tell him what was going on and make sure my children were safe. That's like dropping a dime. <laughs> yes. That's funny. That's yeah. funny. So um, besides the rebellion, mm -hmm. was there another reason why you decided to start this publication? Well. Ken was working for, I think it was KRLA Radio, and their offices were at Sunset and Vine. And as he's there reporting, he's looking out south from their window, and he sees South LA burning. He sees the fires. Okay. And um, there was a publication called The Beat that the, the uh, news director put out. It was a pop publication. And it was a tabloid newspaper, and Ken came up with the idea that there should be something for the black community about our music and for our people. And that's where his idea was born to come up with a publication. Then we wrestled around about a name, and the paper started out uh, right the following year, one year later. Okay. Now. And it was an eight page tabloid. And it, we, oh, and he came up with a promotional idea to affiliate with radio station KGFJ because he was also a reporter there. Ken was a little hustler. He worked a lot of jobs. Uh, at that time he was working at KRLA radio, he was working at KGFJ radio, and he was uh, kind of a runner but he had a huge title uh, for the Huntley Brinkley report at NBC. And um, when the riot broke out or the rebellion broke out, they didn't have any black reporters and they didn't feel safe sending them in to that area. So he talked them into the fact he was a reporter, and so they sent him. Okay. So it basically began his television reporting career and went on from there. So um, what did the first issue look like? I wish I had it handy. I do have copies, but not with me right now. Uh, James Brown and Mick Jagger are, 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 are mm. Are they, save, are they stealing, or basically it summarized, are the white boys stealing black soul? Okay. It didn't say it like that. It was a little bit <laughs> more, <laughs> more politically correct for the time, but that's in essence what it said. Okay. Yeah, so that was a bit of a, a, a high-handed statement <laughs> at the time as I think back about it. So how, the first issue, how well was it, re was it received? Well, KGFJ, well, he, he worked out this deal with KGFJ. It was called KGFJ Soul. Okay. And we gave them a center spread of two pages that they could give print publicity to their advertisers and things okay. in exchange for on the radio promotions. So people were ready for Soul from hearing about it on the radio before it ever came out. And uh, I remember the first time I saw a, a kid sitting on a bus stop with the newspaper up in their face reading it. It was well received. Uh, one of the later editors, Judy Spiegelman, was using Soul as a teaching tool to engage her students in an elementary school in South LA because they didn't care about C. Dick Run, but they cared about their artist. And so 
she was using it for teaching, and that's how we got to know her. And she eventually became an editor and left the system. Uh, it was very well received for a local newspaper. Within six months, though, we'd gone up to San Francisco, and before the year was out, we had like 30 markets with affiliates with the stations all across the country.